Good morning, friends. Happy Thursday. How you feeling this morning? Thumbs up, somewhere in the middle. Thumbs down. I am feeling thumbs up. I am so happy to be here with you today. Today we are going to have to be detectives. That means we need to solve a mystery. The name of our book that we're reading today is Dizzy the Mutt with the Propeller Butt. What do you think the story is about just by looking at this cover? Do you think it's about eating chicken noodle soup? Do you think it's about climbing a mountain? What animal do you think is on the front here? Let's find out. Well, there's something special about this book. Right here on our title page, the author actually signed it. Isn't that pretty cool? Dizzy the Mutt and the Propeller Butt. All right, detectives, are you ready to solve this mystery? Here we go. This is the history with a bit of mystery of a dog that confuses me so. This book is about a dog that gets out. How? Well, maybe you'll know. All right, let's look for some clues here. It started one morning when quite without warning, mom shouted, we need a new pet. At the shelter sat Dizzy. What kind of dog is he? That's something we still don't know yet. By the way that he licked us, we're glad that he picked us. This mutt we were lucky to buy. As we walked down the street, I thought his back feet were hovering as if he could fly. What do you think is making him hover? What part of his body? Dogs have tails. It looks like he's wagging his really, really, really fast. After scratching my noodle, I guessed he's part poodle, but the back half is kind of a puzzle. So we took Dizzy uptown and showed him around. Does anyone know for shuzzle? Part frog and part poodle, that would make him a frutal, muttered a man who was pushing a broom. No, part rooster, part poodle, a cocker doodle doodle, said a maid who was dusting a room. Part balloon, part poodle, a rare breed of baloodle cracked a guy whose name tag read Billy. My kids told a whopper. They said he's part chopper. Oh, helicopter. <laughs> I can't. Guys, this book. My kids told a whopper. They said he's part copter. Helicopter? Now, isn't that silly? Do you think he's part helicopter? Or maybe part balloon? Around his new home, little Dizzy did roam, sniffing every inch nook and cranny. He loved his new life, especially my wife, my two boys, and even their granny. Oh, they have a big family. Now this part seems braggy, but his tail was so waggy, he couldn't have ever have been happier more. And this may seem nutty, but I swear our new buddy was raising his butt off the floor. But what happened when Dizzy was put in his pen is every dog owner's worst fear. Not five minutes went by, then I heard a faint cry, and when I looked up, he'd disappeared. I ran through the yard. Could he have gone very far? Could he have jumped over the old wooden gate? He must have been busy, our little dog Dizzy, to have to have made such a perfect escape. How do you think he escaped? Detectives, we need to start putting some of these clues together.
Hmm. Could this dog be part mole? Did he dig a quick hole? Tunneled out, and if so, tell me where. But then from the roof, I heard a loud woof. Hey, how'd he get up there? Right after I spotted him, I climbed up and got him. Tied him up, but that didn't last long. For shortly thereafter, I heard some dog laughter, and once more, my dizzy was gone. This time he got free, he was found in a tree. Though dogs don't know how to climb. Is he part alley cat? What else explains that? How does Dizzy get out every time? How did Dizzy get up in a tree? I was sort of half furious and kind of half curious to understand how Dizzy got loose. For a moment or two, I thought this dog flew. Could Dizzy be part poodle, part goose? But he's no flying pup, and I mustn't give up. I had to control this lawn rover. Oh, what an odd day. He keeps getting away past the fence it is under or over. Wow. The drone has a big, deep light car busting through the fence. Is that how he's getting through? So I tried extra hard to disproof the yard. I covered every hole with wood. All along the fence tops, I nailed sticks, rakes, and mops. Get out, there's no way that he could. Then I went back inside, very confident that I'd finally managed to outsmart that dizzy. But in less than a minute, our dog wasn't in it. Our backyard was empty. Where is he? Hey, Dad, my boy said. He's upstairs on the bed. There I found my boys rubbing his tummy. Dizzy'd left his dog run, and he'd had his dog fun, and he'd fooled me like some kind of dummy. Part wizard, part poodle. We're at the end of this doodle, and for me, it's not very clear. Is he dizzy the mutt with the propeller butt? Hmm, what's your answer, my dear? What do you think? How do you think? Dizzy the mutt is getting out of his backyard. On the back, there's kind of some funny little reviews of the book right here it says this book is that it is decidedly anti-squirrel in defense of squirrels everywhere i demand a boy cut find a girl and a girl cut squirrel page 35 flying dogs and you thought birds could mess up your windshield bird page 27 the only problem with this book is that it doesn't stink skunk page 29 silly well, if you want to let me know how you think Dizzy the Mutt got out of the backyard, I'd love to know. And tomorrow is Friday, so we don't have a story, but we do have Lunch Bunch. So if you want to join me tomorrow uh, between 1130 and noon, I will post the link in the classroom. And I can't wait to chat and catch up. See you guys then. Bye.